Welcome to Electron Line. In this example, we can see another glimpse of the power of the Green's theorem. We're going to try to do the line integral defined by this over the path defined here. And notice that we're going to start at any point we like and simply integrate around like that. Now we have two curves. We have this curve right here defined by x squared plus y squared equals 1 and this curve right here which is defined by x squared plus y squared equals 9. And then we have these two sections right here. So how do we handle that? Well, we are going to convert to a new parameter called theta and that will make integrating over that a lot easier but we are going to use Green's theorem which means that instead of doing the straight line integral which means we would have to integrate over all these line sections we're going to apply that methodology right there so that means that this is going to be equal to the double integral over the enclosed region right there of the partial of q with respect to x plus, oh, not plus, but minus the partial of P with respect to Y times dA, realizing that this here is our P and this here is our Q. So this becomes equal to the double integral over the region enclosed by the path of the partial of Q with respect to X. Notice that that gives us 3Y minus the partial of p with respect to y that gives us minus 2y times dA and so this then becomes the double integral over the region enclosed by the path of y dA. So now what we're going to do is we're going to replace y and dA by the equivalent in terms of theta. Notice that dA can be written as r dr d theta and let's come over here. So this becomes equal to the double integral over the region. And y is now going to become r times the sine of theta. And dA is going to be r dr d theta. And when we combine this, so this gives us the double integral. Now for r, we're going to integrate from 1 to 3. And notice that if x squared plus y squared equals 1, when y is equal to 0, x is equal to 1. And over here, when y is equal to 0, x is equal to 3. So that would be 1, that would be 3. So when we integrate in the radial direction over r, that would be from 1 to 3. And when we integrate around the circle, that would be from 0 to pi, because we're only going to do a half a circle. So from 0 to pi, and this becomes uh, the sine of theta d theta, and r squared dr. So we can integrate over r first and see what we get. So this is equal to the single integral from 0 to pi. We still have the sine of theta d theta, but we already have r cubed over 3 evaluated from 1 to 3, which is equal to the integral from 0 to pi of the sine of theta d theta, times, plug in the upper limit, we get 27 divided by 3, which is 9, minus plug in the lower limit, we get 1 third. So that would be 27 over 3 minus 1 over 3, which is 26 over 3. So this becomes 26 over 3 times integral from 0 to pi of the sine of theta d theta. So now we only have to integrate over theta. The derivative of the sine is the cosine, so the integral of the sine is the negative cosine. So this becomes equal to 26 over 3 times the negative cosine of theta evaluated from 0 to pi. So the signs here get a little bit tricky, but that's okay. So this is equal to 26 over 3 times. When I plug in the upper limit, the cosine of pi is a negative 1. But I have a negative in front of that, that gives me a positive one. Minus, now I plug in a minus because I'm subtracting when I plug in the lower limit. So 0 placed in here, the cosine of 0 is 1, but I have a negative in front of it, so it's minus a negative 1. So 1 plus 1 gives me 2, 2 times 26 is equal to 52 divided by 3. And that will then be the result of that line integral. Again, you can see the power of Green's theorem. It is a lot easier 
to integrate using Green's theorem than to try and do the line integral over those four line segments. And there you go, a good way to go when you're faced with trying to do line integrals and you can apply Green's theorem to it. That's how it's done.